Decision not to biopsy. The lines are parallel and one can see lines under the epinicium, which is a hallmark sign for pseudo Hutchinson sign. Also, the patient has to consent to a biopsy procedure. Even though the lines are unevenly spaced, if the patient does not consent, you don't biopsy. If a punch biopsy is performed, one must explain the risks of damage to the matrix and never having a normal toenail grow out. An alternative approach is to use your typical Zadig approach without removing the toenail matrix, but taking a superficial shave of the area. Okay, you see those two lines? Those two lines. Let's see those two lines. There's one line right there. There's another line right there. And there, that circle is where you take your punch biopsy. Those two lines you use to flip back if you don't want to do a punch and to get to the matrix to do a shave of the matrix. Case number four, 78 year old female who wanted her toenails treated for a foot exam. Patients aware, not aware of any lesion, no history of skin cancer. Melanocytic lesion, network streets, aggregated globules. globules. Okay, we're getting close up here. Take a look at this. You have a couple of aggregated globules. You have a non-uniform distribution. See the non-uniform distribution down here? Looks irregular. Most important conclusion. It is not important to diagnose if this is a melanocytic lesion versus a basal cell. If the lesion is a melanocytic lesion, it is irregular and you should biopsy it. If the lesion is basal cell, you should biopsy. So if a mistake is made, so long as a biopsy is taken, it's okay. I can't see spoke wheels, radio structures, or streaks from a central hub. I can't see leaf-like structures. Actually, I tried to see a leaf-like structure here. No such thing. A leaf-like structure, what? I really keep looking and I can't even see leaf-like structure in a basal cell carcinoma. I don't know how they see a leaf, but that's another story. Okay, uh, there's a darkened area, okay, in the upper right that could possibly be an ulceration. See the upper right, it's darkened, possibly an ulceration. Okay. Okay, globules alone make this a melanocytic lesion, and this must be biopsied. Especially if the ag globules are ag aggregated. Globules and melanocytic lesions are blind to the naked eye. And this is the mo more reason why each one of us should embrace dermatoscopes with the highest polarization possible. And even if this is not globules, even if this is a basal cell. So you biopsy basal cells anyway. Here you go. Case number five. A female did not know about this lesion on the plantar aspect of her left foot. No history of skin cancer or family history of skin cancer. Take a look at this. Normal network, starburst pattern with radio streaming, pseudopods, reed nevus, melanoma. What do we have? Okay, you see uniform pigment. You see... Actually, this looks quite ominous, but... Everything is uniform, so I would not worry that much, but wait a second. It looks like a starburst pattern. More than likely, this is a Reed's nevus, but sometimes a melanoma appears as if it's a Reed's nevus. Should this be biopsied? Is the skin above or below Wallace's line that separates your dermatoglyphic from non glabrous skin? If it's below Wallace's line, is there a forward pattern, ridge pattern, lattice pattern, or fibula pattern? Even if there is a ridge pattern, does it even matter? This lesion was right at Wallace's line. So you could have some uh, difference occurring within the part that's on the dermatoglyphic area of the feet and the parts that's on the non-glabrous area of the feet. However, in this case, it looked uniform. How can a rich pattern matter if ethnic pigmentation is present? With ethnic pigmentation, even a rich pattern can be present, and one does not necessarily have to biopsy. I learned this at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Seminar, and I want 
I want to encourage every one of you out there to experience what I experienced at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Seminar. The speakers were phenomenal.